Hi everyone, it's a rainy day in, here in Ohio, so I thought it would be a good day to come down to my basement. I'm shooting another video for you today. This is going to be, I think, day 12 of the quarantine distraction videos that I'm doing. Uh, today I'm going to take a vase that I've previously thrown and I'm going to be carving it to create a luminary. I have another video on, on this um, and I'm really going to do it kind of the same way, but this this is a, a luminary where I put twinkle lights inside. Um, I, I will put links um, to the lights that I usually get. I, I just get them off of Amazon. And um, it makes a really great kind of a conversation piece. Um, uh, I'm making two of them right now for two of my sisters. One of them I've already, one sister I've already given one to. So uh, these two are surprises for my other sisters. So don't tell them. I know that they don't watch my channel. So it's not like I'm giving anything away unless you all tell them. So um, hope you enjoy. I'm going to probably do a lot of uh, fast forwarding through this and just voiceover to help um, make it go a little bit faster for you. For cutting the holes in this vase to make a luminary, I'm going to be using, first of all, my cordless drill. Um, I really like this one. It's very lightweight and it's not fatiguing to use. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife. I'll be using um, a couple different sizes of uh, stiff paint brushes to clean up my cuts and the holes. And um, yeah, that's probably pretty much it. So let's get started. Okay, I'm starting off by uh, marking a central point for the holes that I'm going to put. Um, that's kind of my starting point in the middle of the dents. And uh, I'm just marking that. And now I'm marking holes above and below. And these are ones that I'm cutting with an X-Acto. When I cut with an X-Acto like this, I always poke the X-Acto in the middle of the hole and whittle it to get it to the correct size. And they're not perfect, but they're, they're close enough. And I'm graduating the sizes, so the biggest hole is dead center, and then they get smaller as they're going to the top and the bottom. And I have six dents in this uh, one. I divided it into sixes, so I'm trying to go for something that has a bit of symmetry to it. Now I'm using my largest drill bit and uh, kind of spacing some holes in there. Oh, and my cup, by the way, that's sitting there on the table. I'll have to see if I can find out who did that one. I bought that in Asheville uh, last summer. It's not mine, but I thought it was nice. And now I've switched to smaller holes. So I'm graduating my sizes to go from the big to the smaller. And again, I'm trying to go for symmetry in a smaller drill bit again. I had to change my battery pack there. And uh, this is leather hard, by the way. This is a great uh, stage in which to do this. Um, it leaves the holes fairly clean. It's not sticky, so the debris is not getting stuck to it. And now I've gone to even a smaller one, and I'm just kind of trying to fill in those holes. Now I have switched to the cleanup process. And here I'm knocking out, um, right there I was taking a rib and uh, shaving, shaving off any burrs that I had on the edges. I'm also taking a rib and cleaning the inside. Now, after I do the rib, it still is quite messy, so then I'm going in there with a small paintbrush and water, um, a drill bit, I'm cleaning out the holes where any debris might be stuck on the interior of the holes. This whole process um, took over an hour to cut and to clean, and I've you know, sped it down to like two and a half minutes. So um, I know I'm making it look a lot faster than it really was. But again, just really a lot of cleanup with the, it's probably the same amount of cleanup as it was to cut. Um, again, with the brush, drill bit, drill bit um, needle tool, different things to take out the debris. Okay, so I have it cut and I have it cleaned using the paintbrush and water. 
Now at this point, um, I want it to dry a little bit more and then uh, after it dries a little bit more, I'll knock out the rest of the debris that's on the inside. Um, I can't knock it out right now because some of the holes are wet. So if I try to knock it out, it'll re-stick to the holes. So in order to allow this to dry slowly and evenly, the most important thing is drying slowly and evenly. I am going to cover this with a heavy towel, like a bath sheet, a couple of uh, couple of thick layers of a heavy towel, and then um, I'll check it in like uh, 24 hours or so to see if it's dry enough that I can knock out the 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 small loose things that are in the bottom. Okay. And then once it gets completely bone dry, then I'll be ready to uh, bisque fire it.